If you want to awaken your best self, you will need perseverance. It is not a jackpot that opens up one day. People who wait for jackpots are crackpots. The commercial media portrays a different story. That you just have this lucky break and overnight you become a success. However, what the television doesn't show is Canada is an ice hockey crazy country and at the age of five itself children are introduced to playing ice hockey. So they have a very elaborate system of leagues in every age class where the better players from the school are sifted to higher leagues and then higher district leagues and state leagues. It goes on and on and on until by your middle teens, if somebody makes it to the major A league, then that is really elite. That's the taking off point for a professional career. So in Canada, it doesn't matter where you live. If you have talent in ice hockey, the innumerable scouts will find you out. And no matter how high contacts you have, if you don't have the merit, you cannot succeed. In other words, there is no such known partiality. However, one researcher discovered something astonishing. He found that majority of the senior league players' birthdays were falling in the first quarter of the year. It was like this. Maximum out of the players were born in the month of January, less in February, less in March, less in April, May, then June and so on. He was astonished. Do the astrology charts have anything to do with your ice hockey abilities? 40% of the top ice hockey players of Canada were born in January, February, March. In the second quarter, April, May, June, only 30% were born. In the third quarter, July, August, September, only 20% were born. And in the last quarter, October, November, December, 10% were born. So the astrological pundits started wondering what is the connection between your stars and your hockey playing abilities until they realized it has got nothing to do with the stars. Canada follows this rule where the cutoff date in your hockey league is 1st of January. So if you were born on 2nd of January, you could be playing with players who are almost a year younger to you. In other words, they are also in the same league as you. Now, when you are a seven-year-old, one year of difference is a huge difference in ability. The consequence is that player who is a little elder by a few months by virtue of the month in which he is born is a better player. And when you are a better player, you get selected into the school team. The coaches spend time on you. You are given special practice sessions. You play more matches. While an ordinary boy hockey player would play 20 matches in the year, the elite players would play 70 to 75 matches. That tremendous practice keeps on enhancing their skills and which makes such a huge difference. Initially, the difference was so little, it keeps on increasing until by the time they are in their mid-teens, they become elite players. 
There was somebody else who was born in the month of December. But because of the handicap of age, although he was equally talented, he did not get the opportunity to practice. And that lack of practice resulted in his not growing his innate talent. What is the message here? The message is very simple. You need to practice to become expert. Those who were fortunate to have the opportunities to practice, they were able to develop their talents. One social researcher called K. Anders Ericsson, he wanted to find out that millions of children start playing violin at the age of five in USA. Some of them become world-class performers. What is it that makes some such experts? Is there innate genius which makes the difference? So with a group of researchers, he delved into this secret. And finally, he wrote his paper called The Role of Deliberate Practice in the Acquisition of Elite Performance. His research revealed that when children are first taught the violin, they are all practicing three hours a week. But slowly, in two classes later, the better players, they are practicing six to seven hours a week. And those who get into the school orchestra are then practicing 15 to 20 hours a week. And there are those who do even better, they are then practicing 30 hours a week. The consequence, some of the children by the age of 20, they have already put in 10,000 hours of practice. And these are the children who become world-class performers. Not only 10,000 hours of practice, but 10,000 hours of deliberate practice. Every time trying to improve, improve, improve. So what is the consequence of practice? When you first start doing something, you are consciously incompetent. You are doing it consciously, but you are incompetent. And when you practice more, you become consciously competent. And when you practice even more, you become unconsciously competent. In other words, the competence is unconscious. Like when you first started cycling, you put in your whole effort, you were so conscious and yet you fell down. But then as you kept practicing, it became kind of automatic, the pedals were moving. First day you thought, I have to move the pedals and also handle this steering and also look in front and keep my balance, how will I do four things? But then the pedals were moving. They were not moving automatic, but the habit had become deep. And when you did even more practice, you released the handles and you were riding the bicycle. So this is how through practice, anybody gains expertise. So K. Anders Ericsson in his paper, The Role of Deliberate Practice in the Acquisition of Elite Performance, he discovered that under them the world-class performers were the, those who did professional shows. They had put in less practice. And they were those who became violent teachers. They had put even less practice. In other words, they did not discover even one person who was world-class but had not put in 10,000 hours of practice. That is when they made their announcement that practice makes perfect 
has been validated through extensive research. So, if you wish to master any field, you don't need to be disappointed. I don't have talent. What will I do? You just keep practicing. Rasri avat jata hai, silate hot nishan. Karat karat abhyasate jadmati hot sujan. See, this Bopadev was a dullard. Later on, he became Pandit. So, nothing would enter his head until one day he saw that the rope, the straw rope made of grass in the well, by its repeated movement, causes a groove in the stone. So, he realized that is the power of repetition. If grass can cut stone, then by repeated practice, a dullard like me can become a scholar. By utilizing one one moment, a person becomes a scholar. By saving one one dollar, a person becomes a billionaire. In other words, practice is always the key. There is no substitute for it. The commercial media portrays a different story. All the spicy stories, the formula movies, they project a different kind of truth. That you just have this lucky break and overnight you become a success. So there are so many stories that abound of this one college student who dropped out of Harvard and before lunchtime he had floated a company which became the next grand success. Or there are other infomercials that tell you you spend two hours a day on the internet and earn $200,000 a year. In other words, somehow or the other you get this sudden jackpot and you've made it. Take this lottery ticket and your problems will be solved. See that winner of the lottery jumping up and down on television. I've won the jackpot. However, what the television doesn't show is all the losers. They give the winner one minute. If they had given all the losers just five seconds, for the next three years, the television channel would have been blocked with I have lost, I have lost, I have lost, I have lost. So to put your hope on that chance, which is 0. 0.00001, rounded off to zero, is to be a crackpot. That is why I am saying that the crackpot waits for the jackpot. But... The intelligent person understands this is not how it happens. If you want to awaken your best self, if you wish to make your life a success, you will have to work hard and reach that level. That is why the importance of practice 